water here at your service. Welcome yet to another math video, my friends. Man, it's good to have you with me today. Yes, we are looking at decimals. Woohoo! We are working on lesson 3.4. We will be rounding decimals today. That's right, our essential question really focuses us on how can you use place value to round decimals to a given place. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and unlock the problem. That's right, it's a real world problem, my friends. It says the gold frog of South America is one of the smallest frogs in the world. It is, wow, 386 thousandths of an inch long. What is this length rounded to the nearest hundredth of an inch? Well, first, I want to see this frog. Ooh, there he is. You know, he, I don't know, he looks more, I've heard of the golden frog of South America, of Colombia. The poisonous, it's called the poisonous dart frog. I don't know if he's the same guy or not, but he is one cool dude. Yeah, okay, now let's get back to our problem. So first things first, it says underline the length of the gold frog. I think I can do that. The length says that he is there, right there, underline. He is 386 thousandths of an inch long. Now it also says, is the frog's length about the same as the length or width of a large paper clip? Okay, well, being a teacher, I come in contact with large paper clips all the time. And I would have to say, no, if we're talking about an inch, 0.3, almost 0.4, hmm, almost half of an inch, couldn't be the length, must be the width. I'm going to say it's the width of a large paper clip. Alrighty then. Now it says one way it says we can use a place value chart. Write the number in a place value chart and circle the digit in the place to which you want to round. Okay, it says that we're rounding to the nearest hundred, so I'm going to circle the eight in the hundredths place. And then it also says to, oh, the next says in the place value chart, underline the digit to the right of the place to which you are rounding. To the right. There we go. Underlined. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. This is pretty easy. If the digit to the right is less than five, the digit in the place to which you are rounding stays the same. If it's less than five, if the digit to the right is five or greater, the digit in the rounding place increases by one. So I have to think to myself here, does the digit in the rounding place stay the same or increase by one? Based on that set of instructions, I would be, yes, I would be increasing it by one because in the thousandths place, there's a number six and that is five or greater. Many of you may have heard of the Five or more, up the score, four or less, let it rest. You know, has a little jingle to it, something that helps you remember. That's kind of a nice little way to help remember that little rule. It says drop the digits after the place to which you are rounding. Okay, that means over here that in the thousands place, that's just going to turn into zero. We're done. Okay, the six doesn't get to remain. The idea is that you're rounding to a number that's a little bit easier to work with rounding, estimating, an easier number, not an exact quantity. So to the nearest hundredth of an inch, a gold frog is about, well, in this case, is going to be about 39 hundredths. So, so that you know, typically in math, we put the zero in the ones place if we don't have, uh, if we have a decimal that follows. So if we have 39 hundredths and we're putting a decimal, if there isn't any uh, value in the ones place, then we typically put a zero. And that's, I think, is just a standard way to make sure maybe it's easier to see that it's a decimal. Okay, another way is to use place value. Something that I want to remind ourselves is the mathematical practices. Let's take a look at mathematical practice seven. Now, the reason I like to show you mathematical practice seven is it focuses on the looking forward, making use of structure. And with place value, that's really the case. We're looking at the structure in place value. And we were able to find the hundreds place and then from there compare to see what digit was to the right. And that helped us. So it says, I can see and understand how numbers and spaces are organized and put together as parts and holes. So then let's continue here. It says the little grass frog is the smallest frog in North America. 
it is 437 thousandths of an inch long. A lot of times we just say 0 0.437, but understand that is the, the word form. It says, what is the length of the frog to the nearest hundredth of an inch? So again, you see the key word is the nearest hundredth. So we look at that, and in this diagram, it's showing us that we have seven in the uh, thousandths place. It's greater than five, so five or more, we up the score. And can we up the score by one? So that three is going to turn into a four. Therefore, we would say that so to the nearest hundredth of an inch, the frog is about 44 hundredths. Again, we come over here to B. It says, what is the length of the frog to the nearest tenth of an inch? And we're not looking at hundredths now, so we should be underlining the tenths place, which is the four here in this case. And then we're looking to the right, and we see that there is a three. The three is less than five. Four or less, let it rest. So we're going to go ahead and leave that as a four. So we end up with four tenths. Now you can put a zero in the hundredths place, and that's fine. That's called an equivalent decimal. Nothing wrong with that. You can leave it as 0 0.4 or 0 0.40. It kind of depends on what you're doing if putting a digit in that place matters. Obviously, with money, we deal with hundreds in money when it comes to cents of a dollar. In that case, we would want to put our zero in that place value. Okay, where's my page master? Page master. Whew, thank you. Oh my goodness, look at this guy. Man, cameraman, can you zoom in on this guy? Oh, wow, the Goliath frog. That is one frog. Oh my, you're huge. My goodness. Whew, we went from the smallest frog to what, the largest frog, right? Yes. What's that? <laughs> right. You're really a prince? <laughs> <laughs> okay, not heard at all. Where'd you get that crown from? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure some, uh, yeah, uh, some uh, lady is going to come by and give you a kiss and you're going to turn into a prince. Okay, sure. Yeah, okay, no worries. Uh, yeah, the crown is yours. We won't touch it. Okay, let's get back to our problem here. It says the Goliath frog is the largest frog in the world. Although this one happens to be a prince. It is found in the country of Cameroon in West Africa. The Goliath frog can grow to be 11 and 815 thousandths inches long. How long is the Goliath frog to the nearest inch? And again, the really key thing when we start looking at rounding decimals is what place value are we being asked around. Here, it's really nice. They say step one, write 11 and 815 thousandths in the place value chart. So here's my 11, 815 thousandths. And as a reminder, that last place value is how we state that number. So some of these numbers may be new to you to the thousandths place, but if the last digit is in the thousandths place, we just say that number like we normally would, and we make sure that we put that place value at the end, so 815 thousandths, or we could have 81 hundredths. We're looking at that last place value of the digit. Find the place to which you want to round. Circle the digit. Now, what's interesting here is you notice that the problem says to the nearest inch. It doesn't say to the nearest tenths place, hundredths place, thousandths place doesn't even say to the nearest ones place or tens place. What it says is to the nearest inch. And when we think of an inch, we're thinking of whole numbers. One inch, two inches, three inches, four inches. So what we need to circle here is the one here in the ones place because that's a whole number. And that's what that means. And I can see where that might be confusing. It says underline the digit to the right of the place to which you are rounding, then round. So I'm going to go ahead and underline my eight. It says think, does the digit in the rounding place stay the same or increase by one? Well, because here we have eight, and that is five or more, that means we need to up the score, okay? Five or greater means we need to increase by one. Same thing, my friends. Okay, that means that one is going to turn into a two. And then everything to the right of that one is going to turn to zeros, which in this case, we don't need to write them. So to the nearest inch, the Goliath frog is about 12 inches long. 12 inches long. Woo! That is one big frog. Yep. And what do we have? Math talk. Would you change? Would your answer change if the frog were 
11 and 286 thousandths inches long. Explain. Well, looking at it again, I would be circling my 1. I'd be looking to the right and I have a 2. Well, a 2 is less than 5 in that tenths place. Therefore, I would have to let it rest. That means that 11 wouldn't change and then everything else would turn to 0. So I would say, uh, yes, the 2 in the tenths place is less than 5. So I would round down to 11, not up to 12. There you go, my friends. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now here's his generalize. We're looking at mathematical practice 8. Let's look at mathematical practice 8. Mathematical practice 8 states that we look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. In this case, it says, you know, I can notice when calculations are repeated. Then I can find more efficient methods and shortcuts, which is what we end up doing in math. Here, obviously, it's showing an example of long division. Okay, is, they notice the repeated calculation there. There you go. Mathematical practice 8. Now, back to our regular programming. It says, generalize. Explain why any number less than 12.5 and greater than or equal to 11.5 would round to 12 when rounded to the nearest whole number. Okay. Well, we know our rule and our rule tells us that, you know, if it's four or less, we let it rest. And that's a rule I'm kind of throwing in there. The key number is five, five or more. We raise it, increase it by one. But if it's in this case, not even five or less, less than five, we would like round down. So I think in this case, any digit less than five, in the tenths place, and that's the numbers we have up above, the digit in the ones place remains unchanged. There's nothing's going to happen. But when with any digit greater than or equal to five, because we always round up, if we have a five in the tenths place, then the digit in the ones place is going to increase by one. Okay, let me write those notes down. Okay, so let's do try this. So on these problems, it may be a good idea to Simply put the video on pause, do the work, and then go ahead and check to see how you did. So this is round 14 and, that decimal letting us hold that we have and, 14 and 603 thousandths to the nearest hundredth. Let's go ahead and first enter that. We have 14, 603 thousandths. And it says, so in this case, we need to circle, and we're going to be circling the hundredths. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and underline our digit to the right, and that is a three. Let's me know. It's definitely five, I mean, less than five. I still like to say four or less, let it rest. It's kind of stuck in my head. So that means it's going to remain the same. We're going to round down that the hundredth is going to remain unchanged. Okay, that means we're going to have 14 and 60 hundredths, or in this case, you could even put n six tenths because that zero by adding that onto the right of the digit just simply makes it an equivalent decimal. So to the nearest whole number, okay, same number. So I need to circle the whole number. I need to underline the digit to the right. And, and a whole number, by the way, is to the nearest ones, in case you're wondering. We're upping the four to five and everything else turns to zero. So we just leave that as 15. We don't even need to put 15 with a decimal and zeros. We're done because everything to the right turns to zeros, including the number that is indicating here in the tenths place, the number that's indicating what's going to happen to the, the place value being rounded. My friends, is that some music I hear there in the background? Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, it's another video, my friends, coming to an end. Is it just me or is it like snap of a finger and we're at the end? My friends, thank you so much for coming along. Please have a wonderful day and live long and prosperous.